speaking of them and they bell and they begging. One other thing I hate about this time of year, and I say hate, it's kids who think their parents are going to go into debt because they saw an ad and then they want something, but they don't know why. Exactly. And I'll give you the case in point and prime example from my home. My youngest, who is 10, I gave her the list. I said, you have five things. Put five things you would absolutely want mm-hmm. on this list. I said, I might not get all, but I'll pick and choose. Her list started like this. <laughs> App iPod iPad Air 2020 PS5 and the GoPro that was three <laughs> of the five <laughs> slots on this card and then the last two were like bubble gum and lip gloss like yeah and then ma'am. and then we asked like what you don't even play video games why do you want a ps5 and she was like yeah, no, i just want the ps5 i'm gonna take it further that she barely said good morning to me on my birthday oh. like what are you, you you ain't even say like you said happy father's day i ain't getting no ugly tie i ain't getting no handprint i ain't getting none of that stuff i got a happy father's day and you want sixteen thousand dollars worth of electronics I wonder what she's going to do with the GoPro. Like nothing. Do she even know what to do? It's going to go lost, right? Do she even know what to do with a GoPro? But if um, she did, how's that number three underneath iPad and and PS Five? I get you. I get you because I wasn't going to get it. I'm glad, and I'm definitely. Wait a minute, she in the house, so I ain't gonna say it too loud, but she gonna see this. <laughs> yeah. Gabby originally Try again. posted a, self, a picture of herself as an adult in lingerie. In lingerie, with the caption "Won't put my panties on." So she sent DMs to people and followers to solicit three dollars for a video and based off of the original photo she had you would think you thinking you gonna get some salaciousness oh no, yeah no oh what's that pussycat that's what that thing she <laughs> figured people were going whoa 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 <laughs> However, yeah, boy. what she had people click and download was actually a video of her, probably about four years old, yep. um, hopping around with, uh, I'll say, a bareback in front. Now, think about this. This is a 25-year-old woman mm-hmm. with three-plus million YouTube subscribers, four-plus million IG followers, and 1.2 million Twitter followers, and an OnlyFans mm-hmm. following. And this is what she did. She sold you the idea of a nude of her as an adult and switched it out for her nude as a kid. That's entrapment. That is. And it is peddling CP. Yes. And I blame you, yes. America, because y'all are so <laughs> horned up Whoa. that y'all Whoa. went and said, well, I want to see that pussycat. <laughs> and now here we are. This escalated quick. You, America, you're complicit. This is Gabby's America. <laughs> <laughs> so people in her area, um, and not even in her area, but people that followed her started um, contacting law enforcement to say that this is wrong. Because it is. It is. And so at first she came out and was like, no, this is just a sweet little childhood memory. And da 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 da. But the more she started to get this backlash and OnlyFans deleted her account deactivated her account and then she came out with this apology video that she was so this grown woman sat and said I'm detached from reality seven times there is no detachment from reality when you're so when you're displaying CP and charging adult males mm-hmm. to buy it like that's not detached from reality and I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a couple little adult females that wanted to see that cooter too um, but She's just so detached. And that's what she kept saying. I'm going to do some self-reflecting. And I'm like, (laughs) ma'am. She got that bag already, though. But she got the bag. She got them (laughs) $3. Look, look, look. it ain't even $40 no more. It's $3. (laughs) OnlyFans. And this is why I'm going to start an OnlyFans. 
And I'm again. going to Again. It's just going to be pictures of my toes, but y'all would have paid $5 for it. And then we're going to be bankrupt paying back all these $2. She's going to charge $2.30 or something. All it. <laughs> I just want to see how many people are going to pay for it. But this is why I said, moving on. Give give it a shot. I ain't got my cup. But guess what? We're going to blink out. We're going to blink back in with a cup. Watch. And speaking of dancing with the devil. uh, Oh, my God. Lil Nas X. Wrong way. And he did it the wrong way. It was the absolute wrong way. Yeah, so. hmm. (laughs) Yep. And then there was Derek Jackson. Oh, Derek Action Jackson. Listen. <laughs> and a while ago, I made a post, uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, where I said, stop holding these celebrities to your couple goals. Be your own, Be your own couple, couple goals. goals I believe because that. you never know what's going on behind people's social media pages. Mm, mm. And that's a big swole yo. Like, were y'all really <laughs> taking him seriously? Were y'all really, like... This is Derek Jackson, and Derek Jackson says y'all should listen to Derek Jackson because he know what he's talking about. And that's another thing. Anybody that talks about themselves <laughs> in third person, you don't be like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he did a whole reaction video yeah, to his... Because he's like, a troll. I'm over it. I tie point. him with um, Lil Nas X. It, that's what... And, and I'm not going to get on my soapbox, my uncle aunt soapbox... That's what kills me about today. Everybody thinks trolling leads to success. Because in some situations, trolling does lead to success. Trolling leads to notoriety. Not success. But um, some people who have trolled have been ended up on like these reality shows. And that's cool. So to some people, that's considered success. Listen, you can consider it that. But I, I think when in the... The biggest part of what happened with Derek Jackson was Derek Jackson was exposed for being a fake. And because he was exposed for being a fake, and what he did was fake stuff, his money about to be messed up behind this. It is. Like, nobody knew. And I, and I believe this in business. Like, when you get got a good business deal going on, I don't think you go out there and put it ahead, put it out, and everybody can give a chance mm-hmm. to tear it up. But I didn't know he was into it was into some money with Mr. Uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes. Yeah, he's about yeah. to make a move because T.D. Jakes is spread over into Lifetime now. Yes. he Derek Jackson was about to make a move, and he was out here uh, teaching something he ain't live. That is correct. Because he held that young lady with that bonnet hostage to make a video. Like, here go my thing. This is my issue. If you haven't seen the video, you got to watch the video. You cheated on this woman who is your wife. You got a little backlash because of it. So you said, babe, come help me clear my name. But you bring her downstairs in her workout workout outfit and her bonnet and her bag glasses. She didn't even get a chance to put her contacts in. She put the bag glasses on. And you held her hand and made sure when I squeeze it, that means shut up. She was a prop in his video for him cheating. Yeah. Like. At least let her go put some makeup on and look like she deserved to be here to save some face. Like, that ain't help her out. I, you know, sometimes I like to be a fly on the wall in some people's homes because I would love to know exactly. And I would like for her to come out and say exactly what she thinks and feels because she started doing her own videos. (laughs) And then all of a sudden, as more and more women, because there are more women that are even coming coming out. out. (laughs) And some of these women are professional women. Like one is a surgeon. And she's the one who he was in front of her house doing videos. And she exposed. Slow. You got to let that breathe. Yeah, you got to let that breathe. Okay. He sat in front of the side chick house and did videos on how telling black women what to expect and require of their man. That is correct. Like, come on, fam. Like, is he serious? But let's start with the fact that how are you going to take relationship advice for someone who does not appear to be, be in, in a, a relationship? relationship? That's, that's absolutely so fair. So I would start there. Because that's absolutely fair. If I'm going through your social media stream or your videos and everything and you're always alone, I'll be like... How you telling me how to be in a relationship movie of all time for me Dirt. was Brown Sugar. Mm. My kid's going to tie it to a different story. However. Do we have time for that story? <laughs> However. <laughs> I I always tell her it reminds us of our story. Because I always knew she was what I wanted. She was right there in my face. But we were friends. And 
we were really good friends. We were really and good friends. I was just like, well, huh. it might not ever happen, but it happened. Ish but, fun fact. Um, we worked together. Well, we, we've known each other for like years. We met in high school. Mm-hmm. On the um, quad at Poly. Yitty. Western. Hey, double. The quad. Um, and then we worked together at MBNA Bank. We were telemarketers. Yeah. And then yep. we ended up running in the same circles for years. Quite we often. were at the same parties and everything. And it wasn't until we started working together for the second time. Everybody swore we were messing around. And we really weren't. We really mm-hmm. were helping each other out through different relationship mm-hmm. issues and things like that. It was never anything until we got over the people that mm-hmm. we were with at the time. And ish fun fact, I helped him plan his proposal to his fiance before me. Not, now back to brown sugar. It's not Nothing fun about the ish fun fact. Hit them comment section because I haven't said that yet. Hit the comment section if you like. Or don't. Like, if you want to hear that fun fact story, I'll share that in another episode. Back to Anthony. Brown Sugar is a great movie. The end. I want to celebrate. My, my divorce. divorce. <laughs> now I can say. <laughs> and some pork chops. I'm hungry. <laughs> Project is a great love story. I mean, I, I enjoyed that movie. That's probably one of the only black stories, black love stories. Because it, it, it angers me that you don't like Love Jones. Like a blues for Nina? I'm a blues in your left eye. Trying to become the funk in your right. Is that all right? Um, and then it seemed like we were starting <coughs> to get better. But then it seemed like we were going backwards. Like energy level back we had started eating but then we lost appetites and stuff again and then things took another turn for the worse so i could barely make it up the stairs so if 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 you know our home we have three floors and our bedroom is on the top floor so we got to go up two sets of stairs to get to our bedroom and i would go up the first set and i'm like (sighs) Mm mm-hmm I'm like, Jesus, it's only one set of steps. Get to the middle of our stairs. And I'm just like, I got to sit down. And I would sit down on the step. And then I would get up and come upstairs. And I'm like hyperventilating Mm -hmm. almost. Like I can't breathe. So this is Saturday night. Mm -hmm. So Saturday night, you know, we we're here. I'm upstairs. I'm like, I can't go back downstairs, babe. Can you just get the food, bring it upstairs to me? She's like, sure. So in the bed, try to go to bed. I fell asleep, of course, because I've been nodding off like mm-hmm. drop of a dime. Just, oh, the Avengers on. Yes. I'm out. Like, just out like a light. So, Saturday, go to sleep. Three o'clock Sunday morning, I wake up and it feels like somebody has me in a bear hug and I can't catch my breath. So, I tried to open my mouth and say Makia, but it was so little air passing in my lungs that it just made this really eerie sound that sustained it was just like uh, yes he sounded uh, like the ring so i heard him because going a little bit backwards my sleep has been horrible like mm-hmm. some nights i'm up till 12 1 o'clock in the morning some nights i'm falling asleep at eight o'clock i don't know what's going on so this particular night i was up until like 12 31 o'clock mm-hmm. so two hours later i hear the <coughs> sound i'm thinking i'm having a nightmare because it sounds like a monster mm-hmm. is coming to get Mm-mm. me i'm the monster i turn on and i cannot even describe the sound but it scared the but Jesus out of me. And I'm panicking because I can't take a deep breath in and I can't get a deep breath out. So I'm sitting here and the first thing in my mind is like, I don't want to die mm-hmm. because I can't catch my breath. So I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm trying to calm myself down. My mind doesn't even think grab the al- albuterol pump and mm-hmm. take a pump. This never goes to my mind. I'm just like, I just got to. So finally... It feels like the air escaped. And I was like, (sighs) by this juncture, tears are streaming Mm -hmm. down my eyes. I am not the hospital guy. And I'm like, I want to go to the emergency room. Yeah. So we pack up. We head on out. um, Drive him to the emergency room. And first of all, the parking lot is packed. Jamming. 
I noticed that there are people sitting in their cars and I'm like, oh, that's right. I'm probably not going to be able to go to the back with him. But the least I'm going to do is drop him off at the front and then be able to um, mm-hmm. sit with him for as long as I can. Mm-hmm. So the first thing that I want to say is when it comes to um, the way the hospitals are looking now, this hospital we went to was the hospital I gave birth to all three of mm-hmm. our kids at. Um, and it's always been so lively. It's always been so welcoming. And now it was just like pushing people yes. through. Um, so the first thing that I want to mention is I know that healthcare workers are overworked. I know mm-hmm. they're scared. Mm-hmm. I know they're dealing with a lot. But you can't lose that element of personal touch yes. because it just felt like they're trying to ask him questions. And, I'm, and I walk in telling them, I'm short of breath. So I've walked in here. I'm out of breath walking in here. I'm having trouble breathing. And they're asking me all of these questions. Mm -hmm. And I was thankful that Makia was there because she's the triage nurse calls me back. And she's asking me questions. And I'm trying to catch my breath to answer. And as I'm answering, she's like, well, what about blah, blah, blah? And you should have told me that. Mm -hmm. Like. If I can get my breath mm-hmm. to explain to you what's going on, right? I can tell you everything, but you're rapid fire shooting yes. questions at me and I can't breathe. Yeah. And I tried to answer the questions that I could so that he could have a moment to catch his breath, but she was firing off questions so mad. I was getting angry yeah. and I yeah. get the point that she was making. Like, these are important things that she needs to know. However, if he's saying he can't breathe why wouldn't you okay let me take a moment Mm -hmm. okay now tell me something um by the end of that triage visit she was she started to calm down and become a little more sensitive um and try to like apologize Mm -hmm. in Mm -hmm. a way for her action this is my favorite because it's it's tied to a little trauma but this is my favorite are you a fan of stage plays and if so What is your favorite one? So many amendments <laughs> in the Constitution. <laughs> and I can only really choose one. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Ain't no fifth amendment on this one. Ain't none. So, I asked this question to set up this story. Because all of my ish talkers in the comments below, they're going to side with me. Except for probably some of the ladies, because they y'all ain't going to me. But fellas, hold me down in the comments. So as a good, back then I was your boyfriend. So as a good boyfriend, I know my wife loves Morris Chestnut. Loves every part of non-acting Morris Chestnut. So I say, Morris Chestnut is coming to town in a play. Not only am I going to take her. I'm going to take her and we're going to sit row F so she could see Morris Chestnut during this play for however long he's in this play. And the play was, because she can't remember, David E. Talbot's Love in the Nick of Time. I wanted to go because it starred more, not Morris Chestnut because he can't act, but it had a vaunt. It had Deborah Cox. It was like, I'm like, they're going to sing mm-hmm. and this singing going to be it. And it was at the Murphy Fine Arts Center. So, we're sitting here. She's excited. She didn't got dressed up for the kid. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's around Valentine's Day. I'm like, I'm going to go home. And she's going to pull out the drawers. And you ain't going to do So, <laughs> play starts. We done waited in the line. I bought a little playbill thing because they charging you for this. You know, the Lord have mercy plays charge you for everything. So, I got a little thing. They was like, afterwards, we going to have... Meet and greet so you can get the playbill signed if you bought them. I'm like, you can go get in a... Oh, hold this that was face. me. Hold that face because it gets better. So the play's going on. And I don't know if any of you have seen it, but I think it's still on. Uh, it's either on Netflix. It's on something. Mm-hmm. So you can pull it up. David E. Tower's loving the next time. Morris Chestnut had all of three scenes. In the whole two-hour play? That is correct. Three scenes. One scene, (sighs) his very first scene, he is behind a curtain. (laughs) 
You know it's him because they pretty much say it's him behind a curtain. This one says, Because <laughs> he was taking his shirt off. Behind a curtain. So cool. I'm embarrassed because she's the only one making this noise. So I just look around and it's a, it's a, uh, it's a young lady and her girlfriend next to us. And she looking at me like, you better control your girl. Like, oh, we don't do that over here. And I'm like, I know we don't really do that over here either, but she ain't no chill. So well, you know, got second the scene, the probably like after intermission, he comes out, he just walks on the stage know, in the trench coat. Sure <laughs> <like that. laughs> I was not really like that. You can look in her eyes and tell she just lied to y'all. <laughs> so at this juncture, I'm like, I just spent $270 for you to embarrass me like this? Like, he didn't even give you this ticket. I bought these tickets. Cool. Third scene come out, and she he walks on the stage, and it's like ending this play. And she's like, huh? and she ate that one. So I'm like, cool. Cool. So before the play is over. She has jumped up to go get in line. She done left me. Y'all, mind you. Took her to dinner. <laughs> Before all of this. We come here. I bought a little $20 playbill. I'm like, have a good time. By the way she left me on that row, I was like, I'm going to go get the car. All right. So as I'm walking slowly, she's in line. And I'm like, I'm going to wait here till you get closer. And then I'll go get the car. So then when I come out, when you come out, I'll be here with the car. As soon as she bends the corner to see the cast, you hear the whole room erupt in laughter. And under the laughter, you hear her, oh my God, Morris, Morris. <laughs> no. And at that juncture, I laugh out the, the whole auditorium. I just went to go get my car. So, insert Makia here. So, they said, have your books out. Everybody, you're going to go through the line. Everybody's going to sign your book. Um, no pictures, no nothing. So I'm like, okay. So we go through. And I think I got to whoever was like Deborah Cox's um, friend in the play or something. Yeah. And I had on this holster, this leather holster. And she was like, girl, I love your holster. And da, 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 da. I was like, thank you. It's custom made. So I'm looking. And Morris... He's just signing, pass it, because they would pass your your playbill down. Listen here. My baby has spent $270. You're not just Oh, that's gonna, why you did it. That's why I did it. I was like, you're not just going to sign my book and pass me off. I'm not a passer offer. So, got to Morris. Gave him my book. He just signed it. He didn't even look up. So, I said, Morris, can I ask you a question? So, he looked up. I said, when you were here shooting Ladder 49, I burnt my house down waiting for you to come save me. You didn't come. He said, they just sent the local fire department today. I said, mm-hmm. And I said, nope. I'm waiting for Morris as the flyers worked behind me. He said, <laughs> and I said, <laughs> he said, you know, you have a beautiful smile. I said, oh, why, thank you. Grabbed my book and I left one out. The end. And got in the car. Giddy is a schoolgirl. The whole ride home, y'all don't know. She almost this on it. Should almost ain't happen because of that. It should almost ain't happen because I bumped into that same couple outside when I was going to the car. They was like, "Dang, Morris Tucker, like what happened?" And I was like, "No, nah, she in the line about to embarrass me some more." So I was just like, "Just come to the car with y'all for real." <laughs> just what y'all getting into.